Good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a wild attacking game played by Polish chess grandmaster Grzegorz Gajewski. Gajewski is on the black side and he's playing against Russian chess international master Viktor Kuznetsov. The game was played in 2007 at Czech Open. Kuznetsov opened up with e4 to which Gajewski answered with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. The Spanish game is on the board. a6, Morphy defense, bishop a4, knight f6, white castled king side, bishop e7. We are now heading towards the closed variations of the Rui Lopez, b5, bishop b3, d6. Well, as you know, in here, uh, castling king side uh, followed by d5 is known as martial gambit. Black is gambiting the central e pawn but in return is getting a nice bishop paired and great attacking chances. The reason that I am telling this is that soon we will see a similar scenario. Uh, but after bishop b3 we first see d6 and only after c3 black castled king side h3 knight a5 bishop c2 and only in here we have d5. Uh, I have to tell you that at this point c5 is considered to be the main move but in the game we see d5 and interestingly this move was first seen in 2000 and then seven years later for the second time it was Grzegorz Gajewski who decided to test this. Definitely he analyzed these lines thoroughly and soon we will see what a ferocious attack he will manage to launch. Here white uh, captured on d5 and instead of recapturing, we see e4. Yeah, not knight takes d5, but rather e4. So black is inviting white to win this pawn. And the idea is that in this case, actually black is managing to get rid of white's bishop pair. And then black will win this pawn and can get a pretty nice counterplay. Like in Marshall Gambit, you know, probably White considered this line too risky and decided to keep the bishop pair instead played knight g5. He will now win this pawn with his knight, thus saving the light squared bishop, knight takes e4. But the downside of this is that this allows Black to push forward his f pawn with a tempo without meeting any obstacles. This time we see f4, knight e4, f3. Suddenly black managed to get a nice attacking chance. Uh, now if g3 then you will lose this pawn on h3. That's why white played d4. And this f pawn stepped forward once again. We see f takes g2. Knight g3. Uh, still at this point touching the pawn on g2 can be dangerous. You are exposing your king too much. That's why white played knight g3. And there comes queen d6. Of course, this pawn on h3 is untouchable because of queen h5. That's why to knight g3 black answered with queen d6. Bishop e4. Still, winning this pawn is not good because after bishop b7 black is creating nice threats. And if bishop e4 then rook f7 followed by rook f8 intensifying the pressure down the f-file. To queen d6, black answered with bishop e4 and bishop b7, knight f5. And at this point, uh, Gorzegos actually made a very interesting decision. And instead of moving his queen, for example, you can move your queen on f6, Gorzegos made an exchange sacrifice. He removed that active knight and then switched his second rook into the attack. Rook e6. Yeah, in a return, white is also playing actively, is not thinking about a retreat and is attacking white queen. Now look, at this point, you can of course move back your queen on d8, but as you know, I don't like publishing such games where you are making chicken moves. And here, Kurzegos landed a heavy punch and we see our beloved queen sacrifice. There we have it, rook takes f5, rook takes d6, bishop takes d6. Now if we take a look at the position we can see that black has very active attacking pieces and a monster on g2. In return white has a vulnerable king and undeveloped queenside pieces. Developing these pieces can definitely take some time and meanwhile black can intensify the pressure. All these of course give black advantage. Here white played a4 trying to create a counterplay on the queen side, but with this move white is creating a hole on b3. First playing b3 and then 
a4 is better instead we see a4 straight away and there comes bishop g3 black simply wants to make use of the vulnerability of the first rank kuznetsov played f3 but accepting the bishop sacrifice is an alternative in this case of course you should be ready to give up your queen but in the end of the day the players are getting equal chances now can you understand the downside of playing a4 Already there is a hole and with the fork black is managing to win this bishop, although I have to tell you that according to engine the position is equal. Uh, let's go back in our game to bishop g3, white answered with f3 and there comes bishop f4. Black wants to get rid of this bishop and switch the knight into the attack. It takes b5, opening up the rook's path. Bishop takes c1. A mistake, it was better to recapture because this pawn soon is going to become headache for black. Uh, rook takes a5. To black's mistake, white is answering with a mistake, thus allowing black to keep the advantage. In here, the winning move is queen takes c1. Now, if uh, rook takes f3, then b takes a6. This pawn is very useful. And then queen g5. Of course, uh, after announcing some checks, this is a double check, black is managing to win white queen, but this line favors white, and white is actually winning. Uh, instead, after the bishop takes c1, we see rook takes a5, and now let's see what's the problem with it. Here comes knight f4 with the threat of bishop e3 check. Queen e1, white covered the e3 square but left the pawn on f3 unprotected. At this point it turns out that only knight d2 can allow white to prolong his resistance. But after bishop takes f3 still black is maintaining great attacking chances. Still black has an advantage. Uh, instead we see queen e1 after which white's position goes down quickly. There comes bishop takes f3, b takes a6, knight takes h3 check, king h2, bishop f4 check, sacrificing the knight as well, but another knight is going to be born. Of course in here a g1 queen is also winning, but Gajewski chose a sparkling continuation and he went for a knight promotion. So you are first sacrificing your knight and then you are promoting your pawn to a knight, a study-like continuation, right? A very, very impressive game. But with this check, he's first luring away the queen from the e-file. In the case of a queen promotion, again, this is winning. A check from e8 can't give white anything. If here, then simply king h8, it's over. Uh, but, of course, Gajewski's continuation is just marvelous. Under promotion to knight is on the board and after rook takes a5 black forced a resignation. Uh, the threat is rook h5 checkmate. And all white can do is to uh, give up his queen, for example, with queen f2, but even in this case there is no hope of surviving. This time this g pawn is stepping into a game and uh, black is managing to promote the pawn to a queen without meeting any obstacles. Nothing can stop this pawn. That's why after rook takes a5, Kuznetsov capitulated. That was a very daring game by Gajewski. He took his opponent into a dark forest where Kuznetsov failed to find the right path and quickly found himself severely beaten. This is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed this game. Feel free to share with your friends as well. And in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.